Hi folks, welcome back to the World Cup. So we just recorded uh, a game between uh, Australia and the Czech Republic and uh, I joined it just as it started so couldn't really go through the decks and do this introduction so let me do this now and I will edit uh, them together. So the Czech Republic against Australia is the pairing and we have uh, this situation so one win only for Australia and three for, for the Czech Republic so they have a chance to get to four and uh, be guaranteed to at least tie this match now and um, let's see what uh, decks the, the two teams will be bringing so we have the Australian Greyjoy deck is a crossing deck and not very typical so it plays uh, an unusual plot uh, deck with uh, two copies of Varys' Riddle which is interesting with open deck list, so the opponent knows it's coming but then you can see uh, how likely you are to hit and copy something useful as well there is a two claimer with a potential extra power gained uh, could be the closer, there is forced march with lots of little military icons I'm guessing and uh, <laughs> well what to say about this, desperate attack first time outside of Trident that someone is playing this so this could be big or it could do nothing and yeah what well, else confiscation Morghulis no surprises there sees the initiative to to become first player and you have the Kraken's grasp which only works if you are first player the draw event that is played out of shadows if you win unopposed lots of uh, warships as well in the deck and we have the two crossing staples the Corbalon that cannot be defended if his strength is high enough and we have the little Theon who is the opposite cannot be defended if his strength is low enough unless uh, of course the opponent has one strength characters in play no iron fleet scouts interesting okay is there anything else the usher that uh, spread some stealth around Victorian with Intimidate, yeah, this is pretty usual and just one copy of uh, Box Huron and let's see what the other deck is doing, so mm, yeah, Lannister Free Company is uh, not sure if this is identical, if they're all identical or if there are subtle changes but uh, this is all quite predictable, so we have uh, Casterly Rock uh, with uh, all the cards that basically work with bestow in some way uh, economy with iron bank, we have flea bottom among the locations we have seized, we have unbridled generosity, they both want uh, gold on them and among the characters of course there is begging brother, we have brawn for the saves, we have vargo hot less important characters, shagwell and sir harry swift i guess just the one copy and then we also have Cersei who can gain some power really quickly and uh, Tywin along with Tyrion and Jaime so big characters and uh, the stuff that works with Bestow we have the drop here with Cersei's Informer this deck is tough to beat uh, so what about what about the plots? we have Morghulis here as well and we have you win or you die as the restricted card, some economy, brand the builder, important to search for the key locations here and counting coppers which is quite easy to play once you have uh, uh, the iron bank with some gold on it and close call should work nicely as well in a matchup where two decks potentially play Morghulis, there's also heads and spikes so with two varies as riddles it's um, interesting what that will hit, so you could potentially hit heads on spikes or counting coppers which is uh, pretty decent but uh, in the opening it's uh, not going to matter against late summer fist I guess okay so uh, this is the quick little, little introduction now let's join the rest of the video okay we join the game in round one, challenges phase has just started and we have a Greja crossing on the bottom with uh, small characters 
I think uh, above cost uh, 3 with the duped Great Kraken and trying with Varys's Riddle but hits Brand the Builder and they yeah, are much bigger on the other side so we have uh, Tywin and Vargo one unbridled generosity already played to put gold on Vargo and the, red, the Iron Bank and the Informer and looks like Lannister is having the better start here Yes, so open deck lists and we have two copies of Varys' Riddle hmm. and no obvious opening plot, right? So it's a bit weird because uh, unless it's Summer Harvest or something like that it's difficult to hit and the other plot, so Late Summer Feast doesn't have anything to copy and the others are a bit awkward so later on it will hit you win or you die and heads on spikes counting coppers that will be nice but brand the builder misses anyway so slight setback but i guess that was always meant to be the opening plot And uh, this is the crossing challenge for three strength, but even this one can be defended. And Dugbringer Doug searches for the locations. So we have Libotom and we have Castle Rock, which are really the two big ones. So that's an absolutely excellent start. That's an intrigue back. Hmm. Second economy just to to draw. So what is this protecting? So this is a draw event, right? Yeah. Let's see how the plot game continues. So now, unless it's late summer feast, it is something with the uh, with, um, when revealed ability. So it could be late summer feast. And uh, we have no dupes here, so we might also see more coolies. And there is no anti Morgulis plot, you just uh, have to play close call later. So these are the options, but um, yeah, sacking economy before a potential Morgulis is a bit tricky, so she would save herself and Carvin can save someone else, but he's probably the, the best character still in play. And if you delay it, there is a danger, of course, that Tywin and Vargo find their tubes then it's difficult to win. So going for the second riddle into counting coppers. Yeah, I was thinking Light Summer Feast because this is uh, an opportunity before you get the really big Iron Bank to play it potentially against the reset or against Varys' riddle that then misses. You play out some uh, high cost stuff like cast the rock and then you are set with your economy for the rest of the games and you can play your counting coppers then. But let's see if anything good was drawn. With timing in play, should be an opportunity to play Castery Lock. We have uh, 
Fanatic cancelling the informer trigger. And here come more chads. And the top balon. Who currently can be defended, but he has start, so he might be able to get past Tywin. Yeah, here come the dupes. Vargo already protected, so now it's much more difficult to reset, but mm, you might not have to. So still, a giant board with a lot of chads, and now there is a character that can get the crossing trigger through. Seven strength. Should be able, and stat, he should be able to... Um, Get a good third challenge that can't really be opposed. There is only nightmares really that can uh, get him. Now this is uh, pretty decent. Just bestows the one on it. Even with uh, plenty of gold, gold available. I would consider more because if Morgulis is played, being able to cancel Hagen's daughter and Curvin is pretty big. And uh, yeah, cast a rock. Can't put gold on it. But you can only spend gold on Lannister cards, so you can't use that as Econ, but then you have the Iron Bank, so maybe you don't need to. Okay, so Shipwright was going to do what? Presumably near flea bottom. So that gets cancelled and then we have Castery Rock putting some gold on useful characters. Yeah, just double checking that the sequence was correct here. It's the only thing it could be, obviously, because the others uh, you can't kneel the big one, and these two don't care if they're knelt or not. Big milk. Is there a way to get rid of it? There is. Of course, confiscation is in the deck. No, we do not sow. No sweet slips. He still has that, and okay, he's not going to. Uh, his ability is not going to bring you just three unopposed challenges, but he's still the seven strength on the crossing challenge with stealth, so. Decent chance of winning that. doing a big power because there is nothing to gain from it and uh, prefer prefers to do a one strength with this one that needs to be opposed I think the informer possibly can be used here no real reason not to And these decks are annoying with their hounds from the discard pile that keep coming back. Then you have the gold mine to uh, always put it there. But 
there, not even needed uh, right now, I don't think. Question is, do you want to stop this one? Now do they both attack? If you really want the crossing trigger, they need to attack, I think, but now just goes with Hagen's daughter. And currently she's not strong enough to beat even Vargo. Kraken's grasp three times in the deck. But it cannot get Tywin because he is strength six. away with it slightly here. Three challenges. Every chance of getting some renown as well. Let's see if uh, Vargo does something. He does take renown off Tywin. Pretty safe since he can uh, survive Morgulis and interesting Hagen's daughter but now the begging brother gets her and the faction card, card will stand to use free companies again Okay, so the Hound is used, but he is safely back in hand. That gets Dogbringer up to 7-8 with dominance. And now what? Do you try to kill Tywin here? There is no gold with Morgulis. And you will be up against Vargo and the Hound, at least, plus anything else that is uh, in hand. Forced March is not really hitting desperate attack, is <laughs> pretty desperate, I would say. Could go Confiscation, but this plan is not really working, where you just attack and kneel out your whole board. And everything strength one. Interesting, so mm, always at zero strength with the crossing challenge. With the first challenge, I mean. So usually you would need strength two so that you can at least force some defenders. Alright, so it's going to take this milk. And let's see if heads on spikes hits. If Dugbringer goes first, it stops uh, the Kraken's grasp. That's the one thing it stops, but uh, I think you let the crossing challenge, uh, the crossing deck go first, right? Especially with no power on the faction card, so let them do their thing and then you strike back. Oh. Not only does it hit a big character, it also gets power and yeah, up to 10.
this so she has the limit Vargo does not it's not really a huge loop but they can keep doing this to filter the cards a little bit it's pretty efficient all of this bestow stuff is really strong in, in Lannister and yeah they have this magical card that has really pushed this deck towards the, the top of the game at the moment I would say up there with uh, three or four others as possibly the best deck in the game and this is a good crossing card quite tough to oppose it and just marshalling grey ghost can't afford to bring it out through shadows so I guess it can stop something little guys for Theon or the big guys for Balon or not Sixty cards in the deck. I just did a quick count. I think there's twenty-seven in the deck that have something to do with gold, either um, being able to use gold or being able to put gold on other stuff. So it's uh, half the deck is uh, related to bestow in some way. There's no real obvious strategy what this deck is is doing that you could describe in in a sentence or two but it's uh, still the, the engine that uh, fuels this whole thing is really strong and really efficient and in the end even though it's doing something very specific it, with very specific cards it's um, basically plays as a good stuff deck A little bit of renown here and there, a little bit of keywords, a little bit of saves and cancels. He can uh, get another save if the game is still alive but I have a suspicion that it won't be because uh, the bringer is on 10 and I count 3 renown conditional in some cases but let's say 3 renown easy to win dominance as well <laughs> just why not milking baron again
Still in the marshalling phase, I think if he passes here it's uh, it wins the game. There is still some goal to work with and the standing casterly rock. And another start guy. Just missing a little bit of gold, I guess, to be able to bring out the hound as well. And I'm guessing this is now going on. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Braun to make him, to give him some strength at least, and of course to enable his save. And we have Flea Bottom and. What was the other one? The Iron Bank. No target for Flea Bottom and no uh, Iron Mines. Not Iron Mines, uh, Gold Mine to put something there. Hmm, <laughs> nightmares, okay. If there was a card that said, if you're able to push through an unopposed power, you win the game, then uh, this would be interesting, but uh, since such a card doesn't exist, even if uh, Theon managed to win one here, the only thing he does, it, it puts card, uh, gold, not gold power on the faction card to steal back, so just um, achieves nothing at this point. The board is... Um, it's such a mismatch. That's uh, a renown for Jamie now. And we'll see, probably Vargo now takes some renown or stealth. Actually, there is only one power icon left standing, so Tyrion can already do that. So I guess uh, Vargo is doing the I was going to say Vargas doing the Intrigue Challenge and uh, grabbing Renown. But no. So this can be opposed now. He keeps targeting around 12. Then he can do unopposed power with no claim. Yeah, he can he can use Vargo on that one, right? That should still be 15. With uh, Dominance. Uh, simply cannot really play against this kind of board unless you are Night's Watch with your Great Ranging and Samuel Tarly and Jon Snow or maybe some uh, Tyrell with the, the high cost stuff can play against this but uh, yeah, this this judge uh, needed uh, to force their uh, style on this game basically and uh, not let this happen and uh, on this occasion couldn't be done. And that's bad news for Australia because I think that uh, puts the Czech Republic now on uh, five wins, right? Four wins, okay, so they are guaranteed to at least draw this uh, match with three games still remaining if this is all correct. Possible, of course, always that it hasn't been completely updated. So I think that's about all we can do tonight. Uh, we've done a lot of recordings and uh, a bit low on energy. But uh, interesting game to finish today with and uh, yeah, should be interesting to see how the rest of the games and the pairings uh, are resolved uh, over the weekend. So thanks for joining me on this one and see you next time. Bye bye.